Iowa. Welcome everyone to the Campus Pride Spotlight Series. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm an intern with Campus Pride. For those who don't know, Campus Pride is a leading national nonprofit that empowers student leaders and groups working to create equitable and friendly college and university campuses for today's LGBTQ plus students. You can learn more at campuspride.org. Today, I will be interviewing Texas Tech University for the Campus Pride Spotlight Series. This series is all about what today's campuses offer today's LGBTQ plus students, our diverse gender and sexualities spectrum. Um, we, will, we will highlight colleges and universities that are providing LGBTQ plus inclusivity on their campuses and learn more about their programs and services. I want to introduce to you the representatives from Texas Tech University now. Thank you so much for being here today. Please introduce yourselves. Please provide your names, your role on campus, and your pronouns. Hello. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for having us a part of Campus Pride Spotlight Series. My name is Jalen Goodlow. I am the Graduate Assistant for the Office of LGBTQIA Education Engagement. I use she, her, her pronouns. Um, I'm also a graduate. Um, I'm, I'm getting my Master's in Couples Marriage and Family Therapy at Texas Tech, um, and I just serve as the Graduate Assistant here. Hi y'all, my name is Steven Chow. I use they and he pronouns, uh, and I'm the administrator for our office and manage our student-facing programs and services. Hello everyone, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Deb Faliday. Um, I use the pronouns she, her, hers, and I am the public relations assistant uh, for the Texas Tech LGBTQIA Education and Engagement Office. Hi there, my name is Matt Hernandez and my pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a graduate student in higher education administration um, and I serve as the graduate assistant for peer education uh, where I manage Ignite Texas Tech's program for LGBTQIA allyship. Hi everybody, I'm Jody Randall. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the founding director for the Office of LGBTQIA Education and Engagement at Texas Tech, which is part of Student Affairs and the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. We're glad to be here today. Thank you so much for your introductions. Um, you have been ranked among the best of the best in terms of LGBTQ plus friendly colleges and universities, and you have a five out of five star rating on the Campus Pride Index, so congratulations. Um, so to start out, tell us what are some things that are on your campus for LGBTQ plus life, and specifically, what does your campus do for LGBTQ plus life that creates an inclusive space? So Isla, I wanna first say that the LGBTQIA presence um, at Texas Tech has been vibrant for a really long time. Um, but when uh, the university established the office in 2017, that really signaled uh, that the administration had a really strong commitment to the lives of LGBTQIA students, faculty, and staff. So I wanted to mention the history of the LGBTQIA presence prior to the office's founding. Um, so a few things that we've done, um, I wanna first mention that we've worked with the Office of the Registrar here on campus. Um, and it, we've worked with them um, to afford students the opportunity to designate their chosen name on university documentation when possible. And that's a really big deal. And it's something that students look at when they're deciding which college they want to end up going to. And so that's why that's been really um, a priority for us. Um, and we also, like I said, um, I manage Ignite Texas Tech's program for LGBTQIA allyship. Um, and so I think that um, over time, that's helped aid in the acquisition of different knowledge um, and promising practices for people who are in uh, different roles across the university. Um, so that branches into departments all across campus. So um, we've done sessions for housing, the history department, college of education, just to name a few. Um, and we've, we also have scheduled sessions for people to just come attend um, on their own time. Uh, we also have um, Women's and Gender Studies, who's been around for quite some time. Um, it's an academic program, um, and they have in their introductory course um, actually fulfills one of the core requirements for students um, when they graduate. And one of those classes um, focuses on sexuality and queer feminism. 
Um, and I'm actually a teaching assistant for that, and Jody's the instructor. Um, and so I think that's a really neat opportunity for people to learn about diverse genders, diverse sexualities, um, and it gives them an opportunity to also work towards their degree um, in the process. So um, a few of our major programs uh, throughout the year, we have Pride Week, um, and that features different things such as the Boots, Bows, and Rainbow Ties Gala, um, and it brings together quite a few people when we're not in a pandemic. Um, we also have um, Ignite Allyship Sessions, um, a Queer Poetry Slam, which is uh, really well attended um, when we host that. Um, we've also had um, the Drag Pageant that's been a part of Pride Week. Um, so it's really a, a long week of a lot of LGBT programs that people can take opportunity take an opportunity of. Um, we also have Lavender Graduation, um, the uh, Transgender Remembrance Vigil and Celebration of Life. Um, and we also support um, faculty, staff, and graduate students through the LGBTQIA Faculty, Staff, and Graduate Student Association, um, as well as alumni through um, the Pride Network of the Texas Tech Alumni Association. Um, so that's a lot, and we've managed to navigate ways to provide those same resources in a safe way, um, given that we have been through a pandemic um, for almost a year, which is really hard to believe. Um, but we've done a lot over the past year, and um, I'm really proud to say that we've been able to navigate that in a safe and effective way, um, and proud to say that Texas Tech is a place that prospective students look to um, just because of the vibrance that's on our campus. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? I think Matthew pretty much captured it. All right, so uh, excellent answer. Um, so moving on to our next question, um, what example can you share that signifies the importance of having a space on campus for LGBTQ plus students? Yeah, so that's a great question. And I think given the whole list that Matt just shared, we, have, we can pull from a lot of examples for why it's so important to have that space on campus that in which LGBT students can feel empowered to learn, live, and grow. Uh, but the one I really wanna highlight is our annual Big 12 LGBTQIA and Allies Summit, uh, which takes place in the spring semester. And actually this year, I think we're about four weeks away from it, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, so this summit brings together folks from all across the state, and this year all across the nation, um, in order to bring folks together to learn about issues related to gender and sexuality, learn about allyship, learn about the work that folks are doing in their communities to support LGBT inclusion uh, for all, all folks, not just students, not just uh, folks in the community, but for everyone. Um, and I think this summit really encapsulates that importance of creating affirming spaces on campus. Uh, through the summit, we can create opportunities to build community and a sense of belonging. Uh, we inspire people to advocate for greater change and greater equity and inclusivity. And we provide the chance for our students to learn from and teach one another. And plus, it's just fun. Uh, we have. We also have a poetry slam during, during the summit. We have lots of activities for folks to just have fun and spend time with one another. And so, you know, we see, we see this on a smaller scale through our weekly programming, but I think the summit really is that epitome of what the power of LGBT inclusive space can look like on a college campus. The summit seems really interesting. I really like that. Um, so what example can you all share regarding um, like not regarding, but like, what are some of the, your campus's inclusive LGBTQ plus policies and how do students on campus feel about such policies? Yeah, so um, the the work that we do uh, is really divided and I'm going to get a laugh out of my team here when I say into buckets. We talk about the buckets that our work sits in. Um, when you're thinking about uh, the, the outward facing work, the programmatic work, the stuff that the students are really involved in per se, um, there are so many reasons and so many examples we can lift that up and celebrate it. A lot of times uh, I like, we don't talk about the policy work that's being done behind the scenes. Um, but I can tell you um, at Texas Tech University, 
uh, our institutional operating policies uh, and, and practices protect sexual orientation and gender identity, and they have for a while. Um, the, the thing that I like to point out when talking about our approach to policy work is we don't look at it from a, a, a what I would say is an old school look at uh, EO policies and, and just around employment and uh, non-discrimination in that sense, but really looks at taking it all the way down to the programmatic level, whether it be uh, things like our office does or the, the countless programs across our institution of over 40,000 students, um, to uh, the way we look at facilities. Um, so uh, it really spans across um, all the different ways in which an institution of our size and complexity operates. You know, reference was made already as an example to uh, the chosen name and gender uh, identity marker that uh, is something we partnered with, with our Office of the Registrar uh, to get put in place. That is just one example. There are many more. Uh, one that we uh, launched this year and it's coming online with this next housing cycle is around roommate choice housing. Uh, really starting to work uh, in close partnership with University Student Housing, which, as y'all know, is a is a big challenge for LGBTQ type offices across the country. Housing is a major area where um, that our work has to take us. Um, and so putting things in place to uh, build out those policies and practices within housing spaces is a priority for us and one that we're starting to see uh, a good amount of success in. So I say all of that <clears throat> to sort of summarize the fact that whether it be at the senior most level with uh, the two senior leaders that, that oversee the work of our office in particular, our, our vice provost for student affairs, and then our vice president for diversity, equity, and inclusion, they are sitting uh, at tables where these conversations are being had at the highest levels. Uh, of our organization or our institution. So we feel really good uh, anytime we see an opportunity to do some policy work. Uh, we don't shy away from that. Uh, I tend to take that sort of work on in my administrative role while the rest of our team, the power team as we call ourselves, is out there uh, doing that frontline work with our students, faculty, and staff, but we need to make sure the infrastructure is behind it with our policies and practices. Really good answer. Um, I really liked how everyone's really involved in the policy work. Um, so moving on. Um, in your opinion, why does your campus feel the need to have um, resources for LGBTQ plus students specifically? I love that question so much. Um, well, because we have this sense to this need and want to create a sense of belongingness on our campus. Um, of course, you come to college with all these different expectancies, expectancies and challenges that you probably face from home life and things like that. So. Um, we try to provide a space for our students to have um, opportunities to go through their journey whatever way they need to um, and experience success in whatever way they need to. Um, so it's very important that we make sure we affirm our students and support them in every way possible. So that's why we need more space like this. Again, really good answer. I really like that because I think it is really important um, for university and college campuses to really have a space for students to, you know, belong and be and, you know. Um, so how do LGBTQ plus students get involved on your campus and do you have any active out LGBTQ plus student leaders across campus? Yeah, so I'll take this question. Um, so yeah, we we, we witness LGBT students get involved all across campus. And I think part of that speaks to the amount of allyship we witness from our partners all across campus. I know Matt and a few other folks have already mentioned, but the through our allyship program, through these educational programs, we are able to find 
other spaces, other student orgs, other departments on campus that go out and do this work for us in creating inclusive spaces that empower LGBT students to get involved. So it's not just our LGBT organizations, it's organizations all across campus that make an effort to be inclusive and to let LGBT students be their full selves in those spaces. Uh, so we're lucky to have so many partners like that on campus. Uh, but besides that, you know, we do have out student leaders, not only in our LGBT specific organizations, uh, but again, across campus. I know through our, for instance, our Feminist Majority Leadership Alliance, uh, which is a feminist uh, organization on campus, our Student Intersectional Leadership Council, which brings together folks from a wide, uh, diverse uh, communities across campus to come together and make change. Uh, our, in our Office of Risk Intervention Safety Education, we have peer educators who go out and educate the campus of, on issues of uh, sexual health and uh, health as it relates to alcohol and um, consent. And we have LGBT, out LGBT folks there. Um, and also, you know, other students in our cultural organizations, in our residence hall student staff, uh, we're lucky to have that vibrancy all across campus. Um, and then specifically, I've, I've said this a few times, with our LGBT organizations, you know, we have organizations that are um, more broadly social and bring folks together uh, for community, such as our Tech, Gender, and Sexuality Association. We have other ones that are focused more on professional development, like Pride STEM, which is geared towards folks who are LGBT and in the sciences, technology, um, engineering, and math as well as OutLaw, which is our LGBT student org organization in our law school. Um, and even uh, off of our main campus, uh, we know there's a student organization, Waco Pride Ally Coalition, at our satellite campus in Waco. And again, that was an organization that was not started by our office, but started by the students there who were looking for inclusive space and creating that inclusive space for themselves. And so, you know, we're always really excited uh, not only to see folks uh, across all of our campuses at Texas Tech, take that initiative and build those supportive spaces. Uh, we're excited to see those spaces flourish and to see students find meaning and find power within those spaces. Really good answer. Yeah. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to add? Okay. <laughs> All right. So moving on, um, how does your campus support um, students across their diverse intersections of identity? So I can take this one as well. Um, so as you said, how do we support LGBT students across their diverse intersections of identity, recognizing that folks are coming in, folk, we have folks on campus who embody uh, different identities, who their lived experiences are at the intersections of different systems of power. Uh, we definitely recognize that we wanna support our students, uh, all of our students, regardless of what their experiences have been. And so some of our programs um, that just this year, we've, um, really put, started putting together, and we put together our queer and trans students of color affinity space. Uh, so that space specifically, uh, as we witnessed over the summer, the not only the isolation that students were facing as a, role, as a result of being sent home due to COVID, but also definitely uh, the spark uh, of all the protests and all the vibrancy of Black Lives Matter and other movements over the summer, we felt that power uh, to create a space that was for, run by and run for our LGBT students of color. Um, so that was just one example of the way we decided to use affinity spaces to really create spaces for and by um, students embodying those identities. Um, and I know um, for uh, our transgender students, uh, we recognize the ways in which uh, uh, the intersectional nature of the violence that uh, is Play, uh, put against our community, our transgender community. And so we recognize that through our events like our trans remembrance vigil, while also celebrating the lives of our trans folks who are still with us and who are with us in our community and with us in our, across the nation. Um, I know Jalen, did you have any other uh, programs that we do that speak to this question? Oh, I think you're muted, Jalen. 
sorry, I'm still on mute. <laughs> but as far as other intersections um, that our, our campus has, as far as mental health resources, we have the Safe Haven Group. We have our trans and non-binary support group. We have confidential spaces in the um, student counseling center. Um, we have the partner and center for collegiate recovery communities. That has always that has also started the LGBTQ plus. Um, it has an all recovery space, and um, we also have provided um, some counselor, a counselor, an um, African American counselor in the counseling center. Um, specifically for our students of color um, who have been affected by the recent events that have been going on in our media today. So, Yeah, so we just want to recognize the importance of that mental health care as well and the importance of having conversations about self-care, community care, and mental health care um, for all of our students as well. So uh, building off of that, uh, let me add uh, two items that come to mind. Um, the first on what you were immediately talking about around uh, lifting up and supporting uh, the health and well-being, particular behavioral mental health uh, when it comes to our students. Um, you know, this is a this is a challenge that that higher ed institutions and well, really society across the country and you know probably the world um, are are dealing with. Uh, colleges and universities are um, really struggling to keep up and meet the demand of students' mental and behavioral health needs. Um, so one of the, another thing that we've been doing now for a while um, through our Office of the Dean of Students, uh, which is working in partnership with our Student Counseling Center, uh, is is around uh, that self-driven uh, mental health practices. Uh, there's a program called uh, TAL. That, that we are using that provides um, virtual uh, resources in particular uh, that students can look at on some common uh, experiences and, and build out like them being involved in their own mental health and well being, uh, sort of in addition to the live and in person, if you will, counseling resources that we have. So going back to what Stephen began this discussion on around our affinity spaces and, and sort of meeting the, the needs uh, or the intersectional needs of, of our students, um, stepping a little bit, uh, taking that concept and building out from it, uh, from identity, to, to really experience. We know one of the ways that we all experience the world around us um, uh, is influenced by uh, not just our identities, but the things we're involved in, the things we're here studying, the work we're doing. Uh, and in particular this year, uh, we are, or this semester even, it's a priority initiative for our office that we're working with our College of Education uh, to develop an affinity space uh, that is specifically for LGBTQI students in education fields. And while that'll be broadly defined for all the different education fields, um, we know uh, there's, a, there's a, a real uniqueness to the experience of queer identified students in, in teacher ed, uh, particularly K through 12 settings. Um, and so there's another example of where we are looking at a very focused group uh, uh, of students on our campus that have a unique experience uh, based on the field they're studying in and practicing in. And so we're hoping over the next several weeks, actually, that this collaboration between our office and the College of Ed uh, through their dean's office, uh, and some of their faculty are going to stand up another affinity space. Uh, I think that's really important because um, so many of these experiences vary based on the academic field or area they are in. And, and, and depending on how we do this this time, it might be a model for us to look at whether that is uh, some uh, specific science fields that we have. I know 
Um, we have done a good bit with our College of Agricultural Sciences, uh, Natural Resources or CASNR. Um, that's another area where we've had LGBTQ folks come forward talking about their experience and wanting some additional programming and resources there. So as we build this out in education, we're going to learn some things from it. And then we're looking maybe at, a, at a, like our ag school to, to go and do that work there. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> Uh, that's all really amazing. It, like this campus is really working in a variety of ways in terms of the unique intersections of identity for students, which is really good. All right, so social justice, equality, and equity are constant journeys of progress. So what's on your agenda for your campus to improve for LGBTQ plus life within the next two to three years? Yeah, so so I drew the question to talk about sort of the big picture, the vision, where we're going. Um, and, and I want to start that by saying um, we've obviously come a long way. We have to acknowledge that. Um, and not just in the last several years since our office's operation, since there has been this really concerted and intentional effort at Texas Tech to lift up and strengthen the LGBTQ community. Uh, but really going back further, um, I believe Matthew had made reference earlier to the fact that, um, you know, our, we have a student group on this campus um, that has been around for over three decades. Um, we have um, a really rich history that I really like to talk about because it goes counter to what my experience has le at least has shown to be a different way of people assuming things about the West Texas region and our institution in particular, that, that plays out not to be true in many cases, that we actually, um, you know, we're here today, we are listed among your best of the best list, uh, and there's a reason for that. We, we've come a long way. Now, our commitment to, to excellence, uh, you know, strengthening community and expanding capacity have been three initiatives that's really guided our work, our team's work, and those that support us uh, here over the last several years. What I can say is that over the next two to three years, we're going to stay the course. Um, you know, we're committed to our communities and being responsive to our communities and knowing that that does change. Um, hopefully it does not change faster than we can keep up with, but uh, the needs, the desires, and even um, as entering students, for example, the expectations of our institution, they change. They change from year to year. They change from semester to semester, and we're gonna continue to be adaptive and flexible. Um, to that so that so that we can stay at the forefront of what it means to be among the best of the best. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Really good answer again. <laughs> um, so what is the queerest or most LGBTQ plus aspect or thing on your campus? So I'll take that question. I think the queerest thing that we have going on on our campus is probably our Big 12 LGBTQIA and Ally Summit. Um, we have, you know, a bunch of educational parts of that summit, but it's also very, very crazy. We have lots of drag competitions. We have LGBT performers come. We've even had like a splash mob happen at one of these summits. It's, you know, we come to spread information and we come to come as a community, but we also have a ton of fun at this, at these summits. So yeah, it's definitely one of our queerest parts of the, of the campus. You don't have to look hard uh, to, to find our community on this campus. Um, uh, you know, for an institution like, you know, we've been saying that is as large as ours and as complex as ours. Um, you know, yes, like Deb was saying, so we have these, these signature events 
that like they draw such great energy and we do a lot of good work, but we also have a lot of fun uh, in doing it. Uh, we, we don't uh, miss an opportunity to have a little fun in the work that we're doing. But then, you know, there's also these, these um, Texas Tech is a very uh, tradition rich institution. Tradition is very big here. Spirit, school spirit is very big at Texas Tech. Um, and so we don't just work in tandem with those traditions. We're creating our own traditions for the queer community. Um, and, you know, whether it's a student org that's been around 37 years or an annual drag show that's been around 12 years uh, or the summit, as Deb was saying, that we're now going into our fourth year um, we're redefining tradition at Texas Tech. You could almost say we're queering it. That was a really good answer. I love the idea of like making new traditions for LGBTQ plus um, life. That's really cool. All right, so to end our spotlight, what are three words that you would use to describe your campus for a prospective LGBTQ plus student? I would say one word that I have is intentional or proactive. One of the words that I thought of was winning. Um, and I think that over, over time, we've had a lot of obstacles that we've had to overcome. And um, I think that we've overcome them for the better. We've come out just with flying colors. Um, for example, when uh, as part of our welcome week, uh, we usually host a welcome brunch, um, but given that we weren't allowed to serve food, um, that was kind of a challenge because it was a traditional thing for us to have a brunch. Um, and Jody came to me and said, okay, Matthew, plan a foodless brunch. Um, so we had to do that um, and it really worked out well. Um, people were um, practicing social distancing and had a good time, met each other, um, and it was really, that's just one example of how I think that we are a campus that's winning when it comes to inclusion, when it comes to diversity. And um, I, I'm really proud that we're at the forefront of those conversations when it comes to um, institutions of higher education um, that are serving all students. Um, and in our case, when it comes to our work, serving students who identify as queer. And so that's something that I'm very proud of. Well, and Matt, let me add to what you just said about that challenge that came your way that really speaks to your word. Um, not only did you have to do it without food, but we moved the location twice uh, in the middle of planning it. So that's another way that this team and our institution is trying to be responsive to that world we're living in. We haven't shut down. We're still finding ways to serve our communities. So Deb, I think you've got a word. I would say vibrant. Um, I think definitely, I was even surprised. I've, I've been here for only two years. And when I came in, um, like I was used to there being like maybe one queer person that would be open, you know, but here, because we have offices like this that make it safe and make the presence of queer people normalized, people feel very open. Like you don't really have to look very far. You know, people have the stickers on their backpacks. We have great turnouts. Our orgs, they are so open. They're unafraid because we've made it okay for them to come out and feel safe. Um, you know, Texas Tech as a whole has come together to come behind queer students and say, yes, you are here. It's perfectly okay for you to be exactly the way you are and you have nothing to apologize for. Well, and, and um, uh, let me add on that, Deb, you're saying about, you know, we're vibrant and uh, there's, uh, we're out and we're proud. Um, I'd encourage people to check out uh, a story in our most recent newsletter, uh, actually, that, that Stephen worked on with an admitted incoming uh, Red Raider uh, that should be joining us this fall on campus, who's made national news recently over uh, a situation that happened in his high school 
uh, in the region. Um, and so I, I would direct you to, to our website and to our each year's newsletter to read about that interview that Stephen just did with this student um, and how empowering it is that like Texas Tech can be that next place where that student and many others like him find that chance to be vibrant, to be out, to be proud, and still be in an area that they call home. Really good answers. I love the vibrancy. Like I can, it's just like, or all of it is really great. Um, so it's really been a pleasure interviewing you all. Um, so please share for those watching on your website to learn more about LGBTQ plus life on your campus. Um, again, thank you so much. Campus Pride appreciates your hard work and your continued efforts to create an inclusive space for LGBTQ plus life um, and for LGBTQ plus students to learn, live, grow and thrive at Texas Tech University. Um, your work makes a positive difference in so many lives. And thank you so much, really. Uh, Isla, can we chime in and, and share just here closing some information about how people can follow us and get that information? Uh, Deb, did you want to, to share that? Thank you, Jody. Yes, you can find us at TTU LGBTQIA on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can look us up on Google TTU, TTU LGBTQIA and you will find us very quickly. You can also learn more about us when you apply to Texas Tech on your application. You can click the option to learn more about us. Thank you. Thank you all so much again. Um, it's really been great. Thank you. All right. So thank you for watching the Campus Pride Spotlight Series. If you wish to learn more about this college, or if it's about this campus or any other college or university, you can search for free at the Campus Pride Index at campusprideindex.org. For over 400 plus colleges, colleges and universities that have come out as LGBTQ plus friendly. Again, my name is Isla and thank you so much for watching. <laughs>